Episode 11 of the Heated Exchange, brought to you by Blitzalytics. As usual, my name is Austin Geller, along with my good friend, Jet Rosenstein. Jet, what's going on, my brother? Everything is good here in uh, Tampa, Florida. Excited to get into another episode. Hopefully, we'll talk more about fantasy football and less about my beard in this episode. But yeah, it should, it should be another another good one. We got a lot of stuff to get into. We'll, we'll recap the Blitz League, where... We have some changes in, in the standing after this past week. Then we'll get into bye weeks. It's a big week. we got a lot of crucial players on bye, so we'll get you up to speed with some of the guys that you can – they're not going to fully replace these guys, but we'll do their best to get the job done. Then we'll get to a Thursday night football preview and then our favorite segment, bold predictions, where Austin is not bold, and I am, but we're, we're excited. Ready, Austin? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. All right, so the Blitzalytics Fantasy League. I finally picked up my first win. And oh, I, on the marching band. I, Let's go. I finally got it done. It took a lot of a lot of hard work, sweat, and tears. I didn't put up that many points, but it got the job done after a heartbreaking loss where I put put up over 200 points in week five. I finally came out on top, winning 153 to 124. It's the start of something special right here. I think my team has the potential to make some make some moves these next couple of weeks and get back into that playoff picture. So, yeah, Austin, how'd your team do? Uh, my team took a dub last week, uh, put up 188 points. Honestly, my team still didn't play as well as they could have. Um, started Devontae Booker. I thought he'd be a little better. He didn't play that well. I mean, Tyler Lockett, you know, Still not playing the ones I'd like him to, of course. But, I mean, I'll take the win, 188 points. I'll take it. I'm 5-1 and one now in the year. First place in my division. Um, and, you know, Jet, I'm just I'm happy for you, dude. I'm, I'm happy for I you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my, my bold prediction of myself getting a win this week came to fruition. And I am, you know, I'm, I have a little ways bold. to go. That was bold. That was bold. It was bold, and it, it came true. Uh, my prediction was bold, unlike some of the ones we've seen from Austin in the past. But yeah, like I said, still a lot of work to be done. This week is going to be a very tough week, not only for myself, but a lot of the teams in this league Everybody. due to the Everybody. fact with all the buys. And honestly, let's let's get right into the bye weeks. Uh, this is a, like we mentioned before, it's a huge week for buys. Some of the notable players on by this week are the number one ranked quarterback, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, number seven, Dak Prescott, number nine, and Kirk Cousins, number 10. Then at running back, Austin Eckler, Najee Harris, Zeke Elliott, who are all in the top five, along with James Robinson, who is ranked eighth. And then we got a ton of wide receivers as well. Mike Williams, Justin Jefferson, and CeeDee Lamb in the top 10, along with Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs, Deontay Johnson, and Amari Cooper in the top 20. And then two tight ends that have broken out these past several weeks, Dawson Knox and Dalton Schultz, also in the top five. So a lot of guys that have put together great performances over the course of the early parts of the season not going to be with us in this week for fantasy football. Honestly, I just have to say, uh, screw the NFL for putting all these fantastic teams on by. Uh, seriously, screw the NFL. It's ridiculous. It's like a nightmare week for everybody, including myself. I've been scrambling in every one of my leagues to find replacements. Um, it has been very difficult, but that's why we are here. Yes. Uh, to help you in situations. We're here to take off some of that pressure. You might be searching on your waiver wire trying to find the perfect replacement for someone like a Justin Herbert or an Austin Eckler. And like I mentioned, they're not going to fully do the job, but everyone's in the same position. We were just looking for the best possible player to make some sort of an impact on your lineup this week. And I'll get us started off with the, the quarterback position really quickly. Some of the guys, like I said, we have to replace our Herbert and Allen. So I'm looking at my quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa of the Miami Dolphins. Last week in return from injury, 
He threw for over 300 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception, QB 10 on the week. This week, he plays the Atlanta Falcons, who are allowing the fifth most points to opposing quarterbacks. Yes, Tua did make a couple of poor decisions uh, in the game against the Jaguars, but other than that, he didn't look at that rusty. He made some great throws under pressure with an offensive line that cannot keep him clean. He stepped him to the pocket, used Jalen Waldo a lot. I think Tua Tagovailoa is a great streaming option this week against the Falcons. Okay. And also, and now, that, now that we got the jokes out of the way, come on, Austin, that's that's ridiculous. You know, it was a good streaming now option. That the jokes out of the way. My guy for the week from the quarterback position, I'm going to go with Matt Ryan, who's playing your sorry Dolphins. Matt Ryan lately has been playing really well. The Dolphins last week got carved up by a terrible Jacksonville team. Um, I get it. Marvin Jones is a good receiver. But he's not like, you know, he's way past his prime. Um, you let Marvin Jones absolutely destroy you guys. And I think Matt Ryan coming off a bye week, everyone's had the rest with, you know, the resurgence of Cordell Patterson. Calvin Ridley's coming back. Russell Gage and those boys. I think Matt Ryan's going to have a fantastic uh, week seven. Uh, he's been playing, like I said, he's playing really well prior to his bye week, a couple of 20 point outings. And I think the Falcons' offense is finally starting to get going. So I think when it comes down to it, um, give me Matt Ryan, especially over Tua uh, this week. I, I get what you're saying. I mean, Byron Jones and Xavier Howard, the Dolphins' two top corners, were out last week against the Jaguars. While they haven't been ruled out yet, if they play, I think that's going to change a lot of things. While the Dolphins' defense is still not performing well, that does play a major factor in Matt Ryan's performance. But I think whether you go Matt Ryan or Tua Tagovailo, I think they are both great options this week. There's there's other guys out there, like if you're looking for a extreme dart throw, maybe someone like Justin Fields, who has has struggled um, so far to start this year. Yeah. And you're, no. you're, you're, you're just hoping that he gets you somewhere between 15 and 17 points because – if he starts connecting on some of those deep balls that he's missing out on with Allen Robinson, his fantasy outlook could change in the coming weeks. Okay, well, wrong. we're going to go that route, huh? There's one guy that I think actually is a great replacement uh, at the quarterback position. I think it's Carson Wentz. I think he's been playing really well lately. Last week, um, if I'm looking right now, he only had 17 points last week, but, he, but because – he only threw the ball, what, 20-something, like 23 times, something like that. He barely threw out last week. They didn't have to because, you know, Houston can't defend the run. But he has looked very sharp lately. And now T.Y. Hilton's back. They're playing San Fran, Sunday Night Football. San Fran has a very stout defense on the run. And I think Wentz is going to have to throw the ball uh, to really beat that team. So I think Wentz is in for a huge game Sunday night. So I have no issues uh, sticking that man in your lineup. Yeah, in the end, we, we advise you guys to go with your gut with whoever you believe will be the best option, whether it's between the four of these guys or any other guys that you are looking at on the waiver wire. But let's move on to the running back position. A lot of big names that we need to fill the shoes of. Austin, who's someone that you're looking at as a streaming option? Um, One guy I love this week, and this actually kind of goes along with the whole Carson Wentz thing. Um, if he, if he's healthy in place, T.Y. Hilton. I've said it from day one, from before the season started. T.Y. Hilton, if he were to come back this year and be healthy, he's going to be an X factor and I think a league winner uh, in a lot of leagues. Last week, his first game back after a long time being out, coming up in neck surgery, four catches for 80 yards. He led the team in targets. He was on a snap count last week, and they really, they really didn't have to throw the ball that much because of uh, Jonathan Taylor, but. Hilton looked really good with Wentz uh, last week. The fact is, I think by the end of the season, we could see Hilton being a high-end wide receiver too. And listen, we remember what he used to do with guys like Andrew Luck. The connection was great. And I think, you know, no disrespect to, you know, Jacoby Brissett or Phil Rivers, but they're just not good quarterbacks for Hilton. I think a guy like Wentz is great. So if Wentz is clear, oh, excuse me, if Hilton's cleared, ready to go, I I think he's a great substitute 
for this week? My favorite guy at this other wide receiver position is Darnell Mooney of the aforementioned Chicago Bears. Right now, he has been Justin Fields' favorite target. While he is the wide receiver 44 in the year, he has 15-plus points in two of the past three weeks, and now he faces faces a Buccaneers defense that has been very generous to the past. They're allowing the fifth most points to opposing wide receivers. We know what Darnell Mooney can do as a route runner. It's all going to come down to whether the Bears offensive line gives Justin Fields enough time to sit back and make some throws, hopefully some accurate throws, because he has struggled to begin his career. But I'm optimistic the rest of the way. And if you're looking to replace one of those top name wide receivers, I think Darnell Mooney could be a very good option. Honestly, I can't even argue with that because Mooney has been Fields' guy so far, which I cannot believe. Uh, I really thought it would be A-Rob, but he has disappointed me every single week. Mooney's a good streaming option. Right now, I don't think Tampa can really defend that well. Uh, I think I think they have a few corners who are out at the moment. Um, they really do not look so sharp defensively. So, yeah, if, if, if anyone on the Bears is going to break out this week, I, I think it would be Mooney. I, I definitely agree. Who's the next guy you want to talk about? So I want to go to the running back position. This is a guy who has been good, I'm not even kidding, every, like every other week. Um, Washington and State's capital, or excuse me, uh, Christmas capital, um, J.D. McKissick. Last week against Chiefs, eight rushes, 45 yards, and eight catches for 65 yards. Playing Kansas City, back to offense, Washington had to keep up, and that means – Heineke's going to look for his pass catching back. This week, they're playing Green Bay at Green Bay, and I imagine, you know, Rodgers is going to be airing it out early. I imagine they're going to get on the board early. So, therefore, I have to expect that Washington's going to be playing uh, catch-up ball the entire game, and that means I believe it'll be less Gibson, and I believe it'll be McKissick time. And I just got to think McKissick's going to get a lot of targets. Uh, so, give me McKissick as a good filler. Yes, so for me, I'm actually going to stick with that Washington backfield. I think this is only if Antonio Gibson were to miss this game because he has been banged up for a good amount of the season. The guy that I think that would potentially fill Antonio Gibson's role in this game is rookie Jarrett Patterson. And yes, he's, he's not going to be that active in the passing game, but he's still going to get a good amount of carries once uh, and Antonio Gibson began banged up in this past game. He did have four rushes for 13 yards, which is nothing to go crazy about. But if you're in maybe a deeper league and you're looking for someone to play, if Antonio Gibson were to miss some time, I think Jared Patterson could be a very nice dart throw. But I, the guy that I really want to focus on, that's my, my top running back streamer, of the week is the Ernest Johnson of the Cleveland Browns playing in a Thursday night game. While they will not have Baker Mayfield in this game, they may choose to lean on the run a little bit. Nick Chubb is out. Kareem Hunt is out. And even with Denver allowing the fourth fewest points to opposing running backs, the Ernest Johnson is the clear man in this backfield right now. And he's going to see a ton of volume. His real only competition is Demetri Felton, who's mainly has been used as a wide receiver. So if you're looking for a running back, take a look at someone like Dearness Johnson, or if you're in a deeper league, someone like Jared Patterson. Yeah, I kind of argue with Dearness Johnson. Um, but to be honest with you, Case Keenum's going to be the starter for, for Cleveland. I, I think he's going to air it out. I, I don't think they're going to be afraid to use him. Like, we see, we know what he can do. Um, and, you know, look at the Minneapolis Miracle. Like yeah. That, Ridiculous season. We know what he can do. Obviously, he doesn't, doesn't have the same weapons he had on that team. But I think they're going to let uh, Case Keenum do his thing. So, yeah. and the Broncos, I would be, I'd be a little skeptical of starting uh, Dearness Johnson. But again, because of so many buys, I can't really argue if you do start him. Yeah, but plus just be the wary. The Broncos have not looked as great to start the season from a defensive perspective. They did get torched by the Raiders last week, and they have not been great as of late. But, yeah, is there another guy that you were looking to stream this week? Yeah, so there's one more guy, and we're going to go – and this is it for me, but we're going to go to the tight end position. Um, 
guy that I've loved for a while. I actually put him as my flex last week. Uh, Mike Gesicki of the Miami Dolphins. Yes, I love it. He is – he's a dog. Like, this guy, eight catches, nine targets last week for 115 yards. Three out of the last four weeks, he's had at least 16 points. He's averaging about seven targets a game over the past four weeks. Um, the Falcons really do not have a good defense. For some reason, the Dolphins don't want to use Gaskin. Uh, God knows why. Fuller's out again. Parker may not even play. Even if he does play, he won't be 100%. I think they're going to just rely on Gesicki again. He is a consistent threat. Um, he's one of two of his favorite targets right now. And, you know, with everything going on in uh, Miami, I think there's plenty of room for Gesicki to have a big game. Um, he honestly – could even be a flex. Um, you know, if, if one of your starting tight ends is out this week, like Knox or Schultz, um, but even if you have a guy like Mark Andrews on your team, um, I still would not be both starting Kostiki at my flex. Um, he's a guy I think gets a lot of targets and against a bad Falcons defense. I Going two tight ends this week, not the worst thing. I did it last week, worked out beautifully. Yeah, no, I definitely you can. That's definitely plenty of scenarios where you can do that, especially with the amount of guys on by. I would say that if you have a tight end and a a receiver that are comparable, I would tend to lean towards a wide receiver. But if you have a tight end and a guy that really you can't really trust, can't go wrong with Gasicki there. And ever ever since week one, when Tua didn't even look Gasicki's way, Gasicki has yep. been great with not only Brissett but last week with Tua as well. They got that chemistry back, what they showed uh, in 2020. My my favorite tight end stream for this week is rookie Seals Jones of the Washington football team. Ever Love since it. Logan Thomas went down, rookie Seals Jones has put together two top 15 finishes. He went for four for 58 yards and a touchdown last week, 15 targets in the last two weeks. Green Bay is allowing the 14th most points, two opposing tight ends. I think this is a guy that Taylor Heineke likes to throw the ball to. We saw him, even when Logan Thomas was playing, him get some work. He got a touchdown in that Thursday night game against the Giants way back. But yeah, there's even with how thin the tight end position is, Ricky Steele Jones should have a, a nice day in a game that the, the Washington's going to have to throw the ball a lot to keep up. I like that. I picked, uh, I picked him up in a couple one of my couple of my leagues um i'm very confident in him i think he'll absolutely find the end zone this week would not shock me if he did especially in a shootout which i believe yes. they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have to score and keep up in green bay so again i think washington's receivers playmakers are gonna have a big game this week just because they're gonna have to throw yes and and as of right now taylor heineke is the starter and that probably will be the case uh at the end of this week but we could see some shifts with a potential trade in the works there's reports out in the NFL world that in a three-team deal, Deshaun Watson would be heading from Houston to Miami and Tua Tagovailoa would be heading from Miami to Washington. Austin, what do you think the fantasy implications of this trade are? I think Tua um, is going to struggle a lot if he can really get traded. Um, I think Miami is a better situation for him than anywhere else he goes to, but – Sean Watson, that's intriguing. Um, I think he, I think Watson's going to thrive wherever he goes. I think he's an elite quarterback. He has shown that. Um, a while back, I thought Watson was too reliant on the run. But last season, he actually showed that he really is – he's a run second guy. He really tries to make a play with his arm a lot. And I think uh, Miami with – I just think a better system than Houston – um, I think he's going to thrive, and he may not – I don't know if he'll play this year. They may just have him sit out for the rest of the year and just have him get healthy and let all the allegations and everything go away, kind of let the drama die down. But if not this year, next year, you can see Watson having one of those, you know, MVP seasons again with this team. So, I, and frankly, I think fantasy-wise it's going to help Watson, but I think the Dolphins, I think – I think they're stupid for doing this only because I think that's the, the least of their – that should be the least of their concern right now. I don't think two was the answer. However, he's not the biggest issue at the moment. I mean, you, you have to look at the defense and the offensive line, for example. That should be the main issue. But in terms of fantasy, I mean, if I'm a Dolphins fan, I mean, I'm happy. Smith thought of Sean. 
as as a Dolphins fan, for I definitely do not want this trade to go down. Like Austin saying, Tua is not the main problem. While I I do think Tua could be the answer, I think while his ceiling is limited, he has the potential to be a serviceable quarterback in the NFL as long as there's a solid offensive line and a solid defense built around him. That's not the case right now. The defense at this point has taken a step back. The offensive line, like Austin, this phrase is cannot block a chair. The Dolphins offensive line cannot block a chair at the moment. Um, yeah, I first of all, from aside from fantasy, I think our GM Chris Greer needs to go. He's had like a bunch of first round picks his past two drafts, has not really hit on any of them. But that's besides the point. From a fantasy perspective, if Deshaun Watson were to play with the Dolphins this year, I think that elevates everyone around him: Jalen Waddle, Mike Isicki, even yep. Wolf Fuller and Devontae Park. Even I think Miles Gaskin would would potentially. No. Yeah, I I no. think he would. I really do. Nope. Yes. Don't think so. Don't think so. Really? Gaskin's a guy. No, Gaskin's a guy that is used for quarterbacks that really aren't as mobile and they dump it off to him. But if Watson, tell me, if Watson goes to Miami, I think Gaskin's done for fantasy reasons. I think it has more to do with the coaching staff, not just not utilizing correctly. No matter who the quarterback is, I think he should he should be able to thrive because because he is talented. I hope that's the case. Uh, they don't use him. But also, I, I thought last week, and correct me if I'm wrong, they targeted him like six times. I think he dropped like a he, few of them. He coming into the game, he had not had a drop all year, and he he struggled. He dropped uh, several balls. Yeah. And he, he would so. have had a, a much better performance. It was a, definitely an ungaskin like performance. But Very. um, if if two were to go to Washington, I actually think that helps guys like Terry McLaurin. Uh, Terrell Heineck has been highly inaccurate. Terry McLaurin's getting close to 10 targets a game, but he's only coming down with four or five of those. And that's a large part for Taylor Heineke overthrowing him, underthrowing him, and not just being and just not being efficient. Two is just a more accurate quarterback, and I think that would be very very good for guys on Washington's offense. I mean, look, honestly, you know, having a rookie or not a rookie, but like a quarterback uh going to a new place, uh kind of like a reset always helps. I mean, you look at Darnold this year. I know he's kind of struggled a little bit the past couple weeks, but when he had a full lineup in, Darnold was looking really good, really confident in himself. Um, I think it just helps going in a new situation. So I'm rooting for Tua if he gets traded. I think, though, it'll be the best thing for him to get traded. Um, I think he'll get to establish himself again and start fresh. Um, I think Washington, frankly, with a coach like Ron Rivera. Um, and honestly, they have some pretty good weapons in that team. I think it'll be good for Tua. I think also. It'll, the ball will be in his hands a lot more. Yeah, we shall see what happens from that situation, and we will talk about it next next week if there is anything that came of it. But let's move on to our Thursday night football preview. We got the three and three Denver Broncos traveling to face the four and two Cleveland Browns, and obviously there's a lot of injuries in this game, mainly on the Cleveland side of the ball. No Baker, no Chubb. No Kareem Hunt, but we still got a game to be played. And also, I'll just start asking, what do you think the outcome of this game will be? What's the score prediction you got? Cleveland's going to win this game. Oh. And they're going to win this game 21-20. Interesting. I, see, I got, the, I got Denver winning this game. I just think they're while their defense has regressed these past several weeks, I think they will win in, in a low-scoring game, like 17-14. to 14. We, we could see Case Keenum, like you said, air it out, but I'm not putting my money on that. I, you know what? And that's why I am. Because people are going to, because no Baker, no Hunt, no Chubb, everyone's going to rule out the Browns. Keenum has been here before. He knows what it's like. He was one win away from a Super Bowl appearance. He knows what it takes. And frankly, this could be a week. Um, is Odell playing? Do we know if Odell's o- in? O- Odell's playing, yes. I'm telling you right now, Odell Beckham. Is going to have one of the best games in the past couple of years on Cleveland this week with Keenum. Really? Keenum is going to look for because Keenum knows Keenum knows who to go to. It's no no Hunt no Chubb. It's going to be the Odell Beckham game and David and Joku are both going to be outstanding. Wow! Trust okay. me right now. It's going to be. I mean, 21, 21 20 Cleveland. Right now, the only thing with Odell is he hasn't practiced all week, but there he should play. But 
and also the weather there is not going to be great, which could play a role in that. But um, let's just let's go right off. Let's go right to over unders. Case Keenum's right now, according to Yahoo Fantasy, projected twelve point two seven points over or under that. Austin over. He's good for at least two toddies this week, at least. Okay. Let's move on to a guy that we talked about briefly before. Dearness Johnson is projected nine and a half points over or under. I give him the over. I think um, they're going to have to use him a lot this week. Just it's purely of volume alone. I don't think I'm on the end zone, but purely volume. All right. And then Odell's projected 12.2. So I'm assuming you have over on that as well. Over. It's, a, it's about time. Odell's going to find the end zone this week. Um, and that's a obvious over for me. All right, that's pretty much all the fantasy relevant guys, I think, on the Brown side of the ball. So let's shift over to the Broncos. Teddy Bridgewater is projected 16.72 points over or under. I think he's gonna go under. Wow. I think he's gonna go under. I don't think he's, I don't think he's gonna have a stellar week. I think he's gonna turn the ball over a couple times. Um so yeah, give me the under. Cortland Sutton over under 14. I think he's going to go over. I think he's going to be the one bright spot on that team this week. I think they know Judy's still not there. I think they know if they want place to happen, it's either they either got to go to Fant or they got to go to Sutton. I think Sutton's going to be the beneficiary uh, for the Broncos. All right, so Noah Fan, ten and a half points. Also over. Okay. Ten and a half. I think Sutton's going to be the more explosive guy. I think I think Fant's going to do enough. And then let's go to Tim Patrick projected nine point seven nine points. I'm going to go under. However. Really? Wow. It, it would not shock me if he were to have the best game out of anybody on Denver. It I, would not shock me. But I think – but I got to go with my gut. I think he's going to go under. I think just – I think it's going to be the Sutton and Fant show this week. That's interesting to say that because Tim Patrick has only had one game under 10 points so far this year. He's been consistently getting like 12 to 14 points a game. So for me, I would take the over on that, but I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Obviously, everyone can't go off. So if there's going to be an odd man out, I get why you went with Tim Patrick. And then finally, Melvin Gordon, nine point three points. Melvin Gordon, I'm gonna go with the under for Gordon. Um, Cleveland has a very very stout run defense. Um, and I think because they know Baker and Hunt and Chubb are out, I think they're going to really try to control the pace this week. I think they're not – I don't think they're going to hurry up a lot, and I think Denver's going to have less time on offense. Um, so, I, and I think – I just don't see Gordon having a big game. Also, splitting with uh, – Javante Williams. Yeah, I, I just don't see him having a big game, especially in the bad weather conditions. I don't so see it. Going all of all of that, who is your going to be your fantasy stud of this game, and who's going to be your fantasy dud in this game? Fantasy stud is going to be I, it's either going to be Sutton or Fant. Um, my fantasy dud in this game, Bridgewater. Okay, I I'm going to go for my my fantasy stud, Corlin Sutton. I think he's he's the most likely to be the Not most good. productive and the dud. A lot of people are. You know, I know I, I recommended um, Dearness Johnson as a streamer, but he has the potential to be one of those guys that does flop just because the it's going to be tough for, you know, they're going to be keying in on the run. They don't have to worry about Keenum and Dearness Johnson, and there's just not a lot of firepower that the Broncos have to worry about. So that could be a potential dud. But if you are in need of a running back, I still highly recommend him as a good streaming option for this week. Can't argue with that. All right, it's time for a fan favorite segment. The bold predictions segment is back once again. Bold with a question mark because Austin doesn't always take the assignment to heart, but we are back and ready to go, and Austin will kick us off. Thank you for that, Chet. Um, so I I had this bold prediction a couple weeks ago. Failed. I'm feeling good about it again this week. We're you were go, using going. a prediction. What? You were using a prediction? I am reusing a prediction. Wow. Because literally the exact opposite happened when I did it. Um, I'm going back to Matthew Stafford. My man, 
in L.A., going up against his former team at home. This guy, Matthew Stafford, will throw for at least five touchdowns on Sunday against Detroit. Really? Adam Beach, and, wow. four, and 400 yards. Who will those five touchdowns go to? Two of them will go to Cooper Cup. One of them will go to Henderson. One of them will go to Woods. One of them will go to Van Jefferson. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the if the thing is, like, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think the lines are a lot better than the record. Not not saying they're going to slow down the Rams' offense, but five touchdowns for Stafford. He's done it before, so it's not bold, but wouldn't be surprised if he does it again. He hasn't done it. He hasn't done it in years, my man. He hasn't done it in years. I know. But it's not, easy, not it's, easy to throw five. It's not easy, but this is this is the year he's going to do it just because the, the offense is on that, so I wouldn't be surprised. Stop trying to take us take us away from me. Ready for my bold prediction? No, not mad at you. All right. Cool. So You're this cool. is this is this is as bold as it gets. The Kansas City Chiefs will play the Tennessee Titans. Um, the Titans obviously they just beat the Bills, but they gave up 31 points to the Buffalo Bills. Let me just read to you their points against to every position. They've allowed the fourth most points to QBs. First to wide receivers, 23rd to running backs, 31st to tight ends, 16th to kickers, and 16th to defense. With that being said, I believe that the Chiefs will have one player in the top five with Mahomes at quarterback, Daryl Williams at running back, Tyreek Hill at wide receiver, Travis Kelsey at tight end, Harrison Butker at kicker, and Chiefs defense will all turn in top five performances Start your Chiefs this week. Who are the Chiefs playing this week? Tennessee Titans. That is very interesting. And I got to say, that's, that's actually a pretty bold prediction. I'm going to give you a lot of credit for that. that I, I like that. I know. I, 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 when I was thinking of something to do, I just thought, like, that would be awesome. It would be pretty cool if it does happen. I don't know the history behind how many times it has happened, but to get one guy or one you know team in the defensive case to be in the top five, it's a bold prediction and it would be cool as well. So I mean, look, if the uh, Titans play defense the way they did the other night, I don't know about that. Well, they uh, still gave up thirty-one points. Well, t- Josh Allen, uh, Josh Allen had a big game, but other than that, I mean, Knox didn't really do much. Diggs, uh, Diggs had a big game, but they had his first big game but- of the year. But the, the thing where I could get screwed over on this is is the is not only the defense, but the Titans have been very good against running backs and tight ends this year. So we could see the type of thing where obviously it's still Travis Kelsey, but we could see the type of thing where Daryl Williams may not finish in the top five. I love Daryl Williams as a player this week, but top five is definitely probably out of all those positions, he's probably the most unlikely to get that. Top also, five I just spot. think Derrick Henry's gonna run all over them because there's not a team in the league that can stop him right now. How about Derek Henry? Imagine saying that he's not going to finish in the top 10. I just, it couldn't be couldn't me. Be, couldn't be me. Oh, wait, it was you. Yeah, t- not top 10. Come on now, Jeff. It, it was, you know, Come like on, I've said, it was, Come a bold, on. it was a bold prediction. Derek Henry continues to prove me wrong. He's, he's, li- me. he's invincible. And honestly, if he continues out this reign, I think, I think, I think he, he definitely should be. I think he deserves no, the you MVP. You should be drug tested. Not Derek. Wow, you should drug be drug tested. tested. Come on. You and, that, you and that beard should be drug tested. Both of you. <sighs> The disrespect in the I got I, I drug tested my I, I drug tested my beard after last week's episode and it came back negative. So for for or for getting women <laughs> picking up girls because okay I get that. Oh god! All right, what's your next bold prediction? Next one, Jet. You're gonna like this because you had this dude in our home league, Jamar Chase. Cincinnati Bengals has been electric this year. This weekend against Baltimore, a very stout defense who shut down the Chargers last week. Jamar Chase will have his first 200-yard game wow. of his career. Not only that, he will and he will find the end zone this week against Baltimore. Wow. I like that. 
I, I really, you know, I like that. I know how you feel about Jamar Chase, my man. I know how you feel. Oh, that's so a I'm good helping one. you out right now. Uh, Austin, awesome. I, I appreciate you doing that. That was nice. Awesome. It's very unlike, it's very unlike me to actually help you in any way. But so you're just spoken into existence right now. So if, if hey. that happens, I'm going to, I'm going to thank you. And I'm, I'm, Jamar I'm Chase, he's going to have one of those plays. He's going to break. He's going to have like a 75 yard touchdown. And it, or it, he's going to have like a couple of those big plays. And that's gonna get him to the two hundred mark. I'm telling you this week. I like it. All right, my my bold prediction is actually in this game as well. Uh, we saw Rashad Bateman return from injury last week, and he Lamar Jackson seemed to like going his way a lot. He had four receptions on six targets for twenty nine yards, resulting in eight or seven fantasy points, and that kind of hurt Marquise Brown a little bit because he sort of suffered from him, him, Lamar not going his way. So my bold prediction is Rashad Bateman will finish in the top 20 this week, and he will get in. He will be a permanent fixture in starting lineups the rest of the way. Lamar finally finds his go-to guy. It's not going to be Mark Andrews. It's not going to be Marquise Brown. It's Rashad Bateman the rest hold of the up, way. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Bateman finishing the top 20, I can see. Do not disrespect Mark Andrews like that. Do not he no, he will always be Lamar Jackson's number oh. one go to. No, no, no. I'm, times no, 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 times are changing no, no, no. in Baltimore. Stop Rashad it. Bateman, Stop the Rashad it. Bateman Stop show it. has arrived and Stop it starts it. this Sunday against Cincinnati. Oh, stop it, Jet. Oh, come on, man. Oh my god. God damn it, Jet. Come on, man. Disrespect. Betsy Mark Andrews like that. Come on, man. Come on. You know, oh, you know, you know it's gonna happen. You know deep down it's gonna happen. Oh God, my ears, man. I'm burning off. If you didn't have Mark Andrews, you would be agreeing with me right now. Not a shot. Mark Andrews is always Lamar's go-to. Always. Yeah, because they haven't had a a target monster and a beast in the wide receiver position until now. If anything, Bateman's gonna make Mark Andrews even better. No. Yes. No. But Bateman, there, their defenses are going to have to respect him. Mark Andrews is going to be right in the middle of the field waiting for the ball. Oh, you are. Oh, my. What are you? Seriously, I want whatever you're on. Actually. You want it? I'll mail whatever it to, I'll, I'll on, mail it to I, Bloomington. I want whatever you're on right now. I'll mail it to you. To be this delusional and this. I, oh, I mean, seriously. I want, I want to feel what it's like to be in the mind of Jet Rodenstein. Because honestly, oh, it's, I it's, a, it's, it's a great place to be up here. Like, oh my God, is, is this really what it's like to like be on drugs? Is this really what it's like to be this? Oh my. Oh. Do you have another bold prediction? I do, actually. And we're actually going to stay with the Ravens game again. Okay. Um, Joe Burrow faces off against Lamar Jackson this week. Burrow will outscore Lamar by at least 10 points this week. Wow. At least. Okay. People are underestimating Cincy's defense. They have a they have a tough defense, and I it, think Joe Burrow's can actually scorch Baltimore. After last week, everyone's like, "Oh, Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore." You know what? Bad week for Chargers. Since he's on a mission this year, and I yeah. think Joe Burrow's gonna have a huge game this week. I actually I love the Bengals this week on another podcast that I do called the It's Game Time Podcast. I actually picked the Cincinnati Bengals to upset. The Baltimore Ravens this week. I think that is very possible. Bengals defense has slowed down a bunch of good offenses, including the Green Bay Packers in recent weeks. And if the Ravens can only keep up this hot streak for so long, and I like I like that bold prediction, and I like the Bengals to win this game. Wait, hold up. You have another podcast? You're cheating on me? That's what my Are co-host on the other one said about this this one. He said, Are I'm you cheating kidding? on him there? I'm just I'm just stuck in the middle right now in the midst of two great podcasts, not knowing which one. Two great ones. You mean one great one and then one iffy one. It's debatable. I I, I love what I do there and I love what I do here. And you know, it, it works out because I get to express my opinions on a multitude of topics. So it works out. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure people really want to hear what you have to say, considering all your ridiculous takes. I mean, the ratings are good right now, so I must be doing something right. Yeah, I guess so. I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm proud of you. All right. All Episode right. number 11. We Wait, had a... Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
go, oh. go. Yeah, go ahead. I got one more. I got one more for you. You have another one? I was saving this one because this is, and th- this is really for you, Jet. You're going to love this one. One more. This has to do with Jalen Hurts. Okay. Jalen Hurts this week will have two passing touchdowns okay. and two rushing touchdowns. Wow. This week. Okay. I, I, you know, I love that one too. You're exactly two and two. God, I, I feel bad now because I didn't tailor any of my bold predictions to anyone on your team. It's okay. Well, you're not supposed to because I'm in first place in a home league right now. So you don't do anything. I like I like that. I I love the Jamar Chase one. I love the Jalen Hurts one. I'm sure you do. I'm sure I did. You know what? I did it just for you. Those those are what I call bold predictions right there. The Matthew Stafford, yeah, that's okay. But actually, I actually I actually I have one more in the in the Blissalytics League. My bold prediction is I will get my first two game winning streak of the season this week. Okay, I mean, listen, the, I don't think you could top last week's bowl prediction of you actually getting one, but you getting another one? Come on, Jet. Like, hey. one win I could see. In your whole Isn't your whole team on bye this week, practically? My whole team is on bye. That's why it's yeah. bold. Yeah, no, no. Again, I want whatever you're on. And that beard. I want whatever both of you guys are on. It's on its way to Bloomington, Indiana right now. Okay. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Episode 11 is in the books. Another great one. We hope you guys helped you get ready for a crazy week of fantasy football ahead with all these bye weeks. Austin, what else do you have to say before we get out of here? Um, listen, good luck to everybody this week. Uh, let's all just all you gotta do is survive this bye week, and then we are back rolling next week. And also go New York next tonight. My boys are getting the dub, 7:30. ESPN yeah. at MSG. I, I, I feel, the final starts tonight. I feel sorry for anybody that's going to be watching that game because it's a terrible game to put on national television. Got a team that's going to totally underperform this year in the Knicks. They're going to totally fall back to where they belong in the bottom please, of the Eastern Conference. Please, please sleep on us. Please sleep on us. Everybody does. Please. You're, oh, my God. I cannot wait for us to win tonight. I'm you're, you're gonna you'll, text you'll, me. you'll be looking at you'll be looking at the heat from the bottom. We'll be in the top three in the Eastern Conference. So good luck with your Knicks this year. And Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo are ready to go. Oh my God, Chat, Chat Rosenstein, what are you doing? What kind of? Let's, uh, I don't want to get too carried away with you, but yeah, if you really want to, if you have nothing else better to do, you'd rather watch a Knicks regular season game rather than some MLB playoff action, go do that. Uh, go study up on your fantasy football. Get get ready for the week ahead. Go take a look at some of the articles on Blitzalytics.com where Austin and I both pump out great written content as well. And that's I think that's all we have for today. I guess that's it. Uh, as usual, again, as Jet said, as Jet said, make sure to check out the website. Uh, we're here to help you, uh, as always. And uh, other than that, everyone have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah, if you cannot handle the heat, get out of Jet. the kitchen. Jet. All right, guys, have a great day, and we will see you next time. See you guys.